Hello everyone, in this episode, I'm going to talk about how you can use virtualized component in place of applications. So usually if you want to load list of records in Razor component, you'd use a for each loop in which you'd iterate over each record in the list and then show that record in HTML format on your Razor component. But let's say if you're loading tens of thousands of records, then it may take time to load all those records from Web API and render all those records on the Razor component. And that's the reason why Blazor team introduced virtualized component in which you can map your records to items property and it will only render records which are visible on the screen. So this can save time to render records on your page, but it may still take time to load all those records from Web API. And in that case, you can use items provider property which should be responsible only to load records which are visible on the screen and you can map a local method to it and you can receive a request parameter from which you can figure out the start index and count of the records that you should show on the screen that's what i've done on my contact page on the left hand side you can see that i'm still using for each loop and it's taking so long to load all those records and on the right hand side, I'm using virtualized component and you can see that it took split of a second to load 20,000 records in my contact page. So let's go ahead and make some changes to use virtualized component and try and load 20,000 records on that page. For demo, I'm going to use contacts page in Blazing Chat application where I'm loading almost 20,000 records on this component, but I'm loading all these records using for each loop and we'll change that to virtualized component and we'll compare how long it takes to render all these elements using for each loop and by using virtualized component. But before we compare the time, let's go and check how this demo is set up and then we'll make some changes to use virtualized component. For that, I'm going to go to my contact tracer component here where I'm using list of contacts and I'm looping through these contacts to create anchor tag on my razor component here. And these list of contacts are getting loaded on, on initialized method here where I'm calling get all contacts method on my view model. And this view model is contacting a web API to get all the contacts. If I go to my web API side of it, then here I'm creating some fake users and sending them back to the client. I'm creating 20,000 records and sending them back to the client. I wanted to create whole web API scenario in which we are loading 20,000 records from web API and then we'll compare how we can optimize that. So let's first see how long it takes to load all these records. For that, I'm going to go to my application and in another window, I have the stopwatch. So I'm going to go to settings page and then I'm going to click on the start button and then I'm going to click on contact and we'll see how long it takes to load all the contacts. For that, I'm going to click on start, click on contact and we'll click on stop once it's done loading all the items on our page. So for, for each loop, it's taking almost 10 seconds. Let's change that to virtualize component and see how long it takes. For that, I'm going to say virtualize. And if you want to use this component, you'll have to add its namespace in either imports.razor or you'll have to add that namespace in the razor component where you want to use this component. So this component has items property, which you can map it to the list of contacts that we would like to show on our page. And then you can set its context property to name the object for the items in this list. I'm going to name that object as contact. And then I can copy this anchor tag and paste it in here, which will show all these contacts and will create an anchor tag for them. And then I'm going to comment this for each loop because we're not generating our contacts using for each loop. We want to see how long it takes now with virtualized component. For that, I'm going to stop my server, restart it. 
and then go to application and then open the stopwatch too i'm gonna go to settings page and refresh my page so that we get the latest bits and then reset the stopwatch and then i'm gonna click on start and then click on contacts and let's see how long it takes to render all the items when we're using virtualized components so now it took almost seven seconds to load all these items on our page the reason why it was faster it's because it's only rendering the items which are visible to the user which is in this browser so those are the only items which are getting rendered on the page and that's why it loaded faster but we still do have to wait for the seven seconds and we can optimize that by using its items provider property and that's what we're going to do it in the next section we'll only load items from web api which are visible to the user in the previous section we saw how we could use virtualized component and render data faster but we were still loading 20,000 records from Web API and it was adding delay to load the page. So in this section, we are going to use items provider property, which is going to load only the contacts which are visible to the user from Web API. So first thing that I want to do is to comment this code, which is loading 20,000 records. And instead of using items property on my virtualized component, I'm gonna use items provider property, which could get mapped to a method which should be responsible for loading contacts, which are only visible to the user. I'm gonna name that method as load only visible contacts. And let's go ahead and create this method. I'm going to go to my code section here and create a private method which is going to be asynchronous and this method is going to return a value task of items provider result and it's going to be of type contact because that's the list of contacts that we are showing and the name of the method is going to be load only visible contacts and this method is going to take one parameter which is going to be items provider request and i'm going to grab that in this variable now this method returns value task of items provider result so let's return a new instance of new instance of items provider result which will be of type contact I forgot to add a return statement here and this constructor takes two parameters the list of items that you want to show and the total number of items so here i'm going to first show an empty list i'm gonna say it's a new list of contacts which is going to be empty and that's fine we'll figure out which contacts to show and here i'm gonna say twenty thousand because that's the number of items that we would like to show on our page now before i run this i do want to show what's in this items provider request for that i'm going to write a couple of console statements here i'm going to say console dot write line and in this i would like to show item request start index property and item requests count property so the first thing that i want to show in my console is start index which is held in item request object here and then we would also like to see what's the count property in this item provider requests object now let's run this and see what exactly happens when we scroll through this page for that i'm gonna stop this application and go back to my application here i'm going to refresh my page so that we could get the latest bits and now if i go to contacts page you can see that i still see the scroll here we're not seeing any contacts on our page 
because we are literally sending an empty list here. But I do see the scroll bar here, which I can scroll. And it looks like it's trying to show 20,000 records here. I'm going to open my developer tools and go to console. And it is showing some start index and count. Let's clear this. And I'm going to scroll through the page now and see what happens with the start index and count. As I'm scrolling through the page, it changes the start index and the count on the console. If I scroll through more, then the start index increases and the count stays the same. If I scroll more, the start index keep on increasing. If I scroll upwards, then the start index decreases. If I increase the size of my UI, then the count increases. So basically what's happening here is it's letting us know where should you start pulling your records from and where you should stop. And we can use these two variables to get correct list of contacts for our page. And that's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to pass this to a method which is going to get the correct list which should be visible to the user. And I've already written that method which is get only visible contacts which is taking the start index and the count. It's calling a web API which is also taking the start index and the count. If I go to my web API site which is passing that start index and the count to my enumerable range to get those fake users. Now let's call that method and see if that works or not. I'm going to hold list of contacts and results here. It is going to be an asynchronous method. So I'm going to use await keyword and then I'm going to call that method, which is get only visible contacts in which I'm going to pass the start index and the count so that we could get proper result on our page here and we're going to pass this result instead of passing empty list here now let's try to run this and see if it works or not so i'm gonna stop the project here and rerun it i'm going to go to settings page and refresh my application and now if i go to contacts page boom you can see that how fast it's loading our items and it's loading twenty thousand items on our page in split up a second. As you're scrolling, it's pulling that list from our web API and showing that on the page here. Now, my web API is faster, but you could have some delay on your web API. So let's add that delay here. I'm going to add an await statement here, which is going to be task delay. And I'm going to show that, you know, the web API takes half a second to get the next list. Now you can show the loading symbol on your virtualized component. You don't want to just show an empty list. You can say that, you know, that item is getting loaded. You can do that by using placeholder. So you'll have to put your items in item content. And then you can put your loading symbol in the placeholder here i can add a paragraph which is going to say loading and now let's try to run this and see how it works i'm going to go to my settings page and refresh my application and now if i click on contacts then it's going to have that split up a second half a second of delay and as I'm scrolling, you can see that loading symbol because it's waiting for Web API to return the response back. But it kind of gets weird after if you keep on scrolling, then it kind of gets weird and starts acting very weird. And this is what's happening because your height of your item content is not equal to height of your placeholder. And you can fix that issue by adding a div tag which has the same height for your item content and placeholder. So I'm going to add a div tag here with style saying the height is 50 pixel. And then I'm going to add the anchor tag in it. 
and same thing I'm gonna do for the placeholder and add my loading paragraph in it now let's try to run this and see if that fixes the problem or not I'm going to refresh my application now if I click on contacts it's loading items it's taking that half second to load items but if I keep on scrolling then it's not acting weird like it did before so this is how you can use virtualized component and load data faster and not have to wait for that long to get 20,000 records if you have any questions you can ask them in the comment section below if you want to reach out to me you can reach out to me on twitter or facebook thank you so much for watching i'll see you in the next one bye